It's a stop in the Hawkeye State for the Arca Menard Series with the Iowa 150. Round number seven of the Sioux Chief Short Track Challenge comes here at Iowa Speedway. And a heat wave sweeping through the nation right now. A beautiful part of the country right here in Newton, Iowa. The heat index, nearly 110 degrees. It'll be tough on all the drivers here today. Hello, everybody. I am Bob Diller. Alongside of me, Jim Trado, and a little drama building right now. The point leader, 28-year-old Michael Self, a little drama with one of his teammates. It came last weekend at Elko Speedway, the shortest track we raced, but the temperatures got really hot at the end of the race. Racing for a top five finish, Christian Eckes was racing in fourth. Let's take a look here. This is the final lap. Chandler Smith goes on to win in dominating fashion in the late stages, but the race for fourth was on. And unfortunately, this is how the race ended for Christian Eckes. He spun and only finished 11th after contact with Michael Self. Look, Christian's probably my best friend here at the racetrack. He's the last guy that I want to have contact with. And I, I just feel like I just feel horrible, man. I just feel absolutely terrible. So I want to I just apologize and apologize again because he ran a really good race tonight and always races me as clean as anybody out here. That entire situation had key things in terms of the championship battle. To paint more of the picture of Christian Eckes' side of things is our third member of our broadcast team, Dave Reed. Thanks, Bob. What's changed one week later? Well, I can tell you, unlike our representatives in Washington, these two parties involved in the Elko incident are using some political correctness. However, each told me something interesting. Let's start with Michael Self. He admitted to the dive bomb. He said, though, he was intent on getting fourth. It's a shame, though, it came against Christian Eckes. And now, how about an 18-year-old showing age way beyond his years? Christian told me earlier today he was fully intent on taking a JBL audio car and perhaps parking it into the door of a dinosaur. Dinosaur. High speed after finally riding his car, crossing the finish line. But when he got to the back stretch, that maturity I was just talking about kicked in. He decided to let it go. A couple of days pass. They talk. They say things are fine. But I leave you with this tidbit. Christian Eckes said he never expected Michael to run him that hard. And knowing what he knows now, he says if it comes up again, he will race him much, much harder, especially with real estate and championship points on the line. To be continued? I don't know but there's enough intrigue to make me want to watch. While that said, Bob, I know Michael Self has to get beyond this, and I don't think Christian Eckes is yet to be out of this championship. You know, definitely not. Last weekend had major championship implications, but Billy Venturini, the team manager for Venturini Motorsports, sat the drivers down this week, and he said, listen, guys, there was no intent in what Michael Self did on the racetrack. He simply made a mistake, and he feels bad for it. And at the same time, Christian Eckes actually told the team this week that he thought when they took the white flag, he thought it was the final lap. He slowed up just a little bit, and that allowed the gap to close between Michael Self and Christian Eckes leading into turn number three. So mistakes from both drivers led to that entire situation. It'll be interesting to see how things kind of pan out here today at Iowa Speedway. Will Christian Eckes get win number two on the season? Will Michael Self get number four? Or will several other drivers get their first victory of the season? Chandler Smith, however, looking for win number four here in the Arkham Menard Series in 2019. We're at IS Iowa Speedway here today. Iowa Speedway is a racy place. Last year, 16 lead changes in this race right here in Newton, Iowa. This is the general tire track facts. You can see seven eighths of a mile with that progressive banking, and that means a lot for competition that we're going to see here tonight. The straightaway is bowed more than the backstretch, but the banking, as you mentioned, Bob, the higher you go in the lanes, the more banking keeps you the speed up. So uh, there's a great three wide. Maybe you'll see four wide tonight racing <laughs> through these corners. And I think we're going to see drivers start down the bottom side of the racetrack and possibly inch closer to the wall a little bit later on in the race. Great racetrack. I call it the super speedway of short track racing. 150 laps here tonight is what we will have for the Arkham Menard Series. Now it's time for the most famous words in racing. For that, we go downstairs here at Iowa. Race fans, it's time for the most famous words in motorsports. Here to give the command, please welcome tonight's Grand Marshal, Daryl Shepansky. Drivers, start! Your engine! An emotional command to fire engines today for this battle for the 
Arca Menard Series at Iowa Speedway. There are the team meets that we spoke about. The 25 is point leader Michael Self. The 15, Christian Eck is fourth in the point standings. And there is the kid that is basically setting the Arca world on end right now. Chandler Smith gets three consecutive wins in two chief short track challenge competition here in the Arca Series. The ARCA 150 for the ARCA Menard Series tonight here at Iowa Speedway, live on MAV-TV. We will have the green flag when we come back to this stellar part of the country here. The ARCA Menard Series is brought to you by General Tire, anywhere is possible. Bounty, the quicker picker-upper. And by Menards. Save big money at Menards. Welcome to the super speedway of all short tracks here in America. The Arkham Menards Series with the Iowa 150 at Iowa Speedway. Qualifying held earlier today at this seven-eighths of a mile oval. And that kid, Chandler Smith, continues his progression here in the ARCA series. He wins the General Tire Pole Award, but just barely over a teammate. One one-thousandth of a second. Michael South was the first car to qualify. Chandler was among the last. The drama paid off as Smith gets his fourth General Tire Pole Award, and he'll look like he's going to take the outside here on this, on this initial start, Bob. So a pair of Venturini Motorsports cars on the front row. Let's take a look at the starting grid for today's 150 lap race. We already told you about the front row, but a third Venturini Motorsports car will start third in Christian Eckes. And the return of Colby Howard has been lighting up the late model stocks. will start eighth in the Wintron number 32 today. Travis Braden, top five in the point standings. He'll start six, a better qualifying run than he expected. Former off-road star Gavin Harlan in the 10th spot. That's also for Venturini Motorsports. Caden Honeycutt making another start here in Arca. will line up ninth from the Lone Star State. And in 12, Joe Graff Jr., fifth in points. Had a top five here last year. This is one of his better short tracks. So look for Graff to move forward from row six. Yeah, Joe Graff Jr., a little bit of a struggle for him in qualifying today. A strong field of cars for the Arca Menard series today at Iowa Speedway. Brett Holmes though in that number 23 fast in practice here today but spun out after an oil fitting came loose. They had to go to a backup car after wrecking the primary. Yeah, Kershaw Shane Shanehoffman did a lot of work on that primary car to get it fast here. They were really pleased but that oil line made them go up into the turn three wall. That contact made them go to a backup car. A lot of changes they actually bypass qualifying, so they'll take a provisional to start last in that car, second in points. Jim Trado, what are your keys to the race here today? These speeds are going to carry on right through the corner. You need to carry that speed all the way through the corner. Cannot have a car that's ill-handling on exit. Getting through the center and exit, you need to carry that speed throughout the entire corner on both ends. Also, moving on up. I think the groove, as you mentioned, is to start low. We saw second and third groove racing late in the race, as we'll see it. Moving on up, you have to have a car that's adjustable to make that move as the sun goes down. Also, about lap 100 historically in the 12 prior races here if you were first or second and about lap 100 of 150 you were either going to finish first second or third in the race so you really need to be close at lap 100 you can't just pray for a late caution to get tires on you need to be right there two-thirds of the way through this race no repeat winners for the Arca Menard series in the 12-year history of this series battling here at Iowa Speedway next time by we'll go to the green flag here at Iowa this is a stellar racetrack. They call it a short track, but it runs like a big track. So we're going 130 miles per hour. We're sharing the weekend this weekend with IndyCar. They're at 173 miles per hour. <laughs> uh, as those cars fly around, they just got off the racetrack, Bob. So there is a tire difference. General tires for the Arkham Menard Series, a different brand of the IndyCar Series. That was a slight concern for some as the alternating sessions of practice and qualifying throughout the day today. IndyCar taking the most recent turn just before I get the green flag here. So we'll see if that affects these cars early on. And it's going to be a fast start. I think Chandler Smith and Michael Self, as quickly as they qualified, want to get out and lead the has had their eyes on that craftsman number 20 of Chandler Smith. He has been stellar so far here today. Can he continue for 100 laps? Green flag at Iowa.
just as expected here early in this 150 lap race. Chandler Smith with the lead. But that young kid out of Georgia in the 22, Corey Heim looking very strong to the outside of Michael Self and into second. He's in the second spot, Bob. You got the chance to start outside row number two. Our general tire pole award winner Chandler Smith elected to start outside the front row. He has the only option there. Advantage, but look how he's now challenging to the bottom. I thought I might be a middle up while after talking to his crew chief, Paul Andrews, after practice. Michael Self in the 25, two times a Canaan Pro Series winner here on the NASCAR circuits. His best finish in ARCA competition, a fourth, but he loves Iowa Speedway. Xfinity Series start here. He's been able to drive a coach here. And you mentioned there's two wins in the Canaan. He raced here seven different times in that series, so he's got a lot of laps here amongst the competition, the most here tonight. Ironically, look who is behind Michael Self right now, his teammate Christian Eckes. Do you believe they have put what happened last week at Elko behind them? I think it's on Michael Self's mind. Eckes knows he has to put his helmet down, visor down, 135 points back. Right now, he has to gain four spots per race to draw even with Michael Self. So I think that's on the mind as well. Don't overdrive it. Don't get too far beyond your means. Keep Self close and try to pass him late in the going. He has maybe a mulligan on Michael Self, is my belief, that Self felt so bad after. And the apologetic Michael Self is still leading these points. He got a lot of points in one race because he was right in for fourth, got the spot after dialing his teammate on the last lap in Elko one race ago. Ty Gibbs, the 16-year-old, the grandson of Coach Joe Gibbs, former Super Bowl winning coach, former NASCAR championship car owner. And now Ty Gibbs has been really strong so far this year. Four runner-up finishes and that big victory at Gateway about a month ago. And that victory really was the biggest track he was on, the highest speed track that Ty Gibbs had ever raced. This young driver in that car number 18 right there, 16 years of age with Mark Rifana as his crew chief, they have it figured out. I really believe Ty could put that car anywhere. They don't do a lot of major changes, it doesn't seem like, at the racetrack. They've had some motor issues they've overcome. It's almost like that's their, their injection of how do we better focus on these races. I really like how Ty Gibbs has attacked this season, running the Super Street Short Track Challenge to this point in every one of the events. And that black 18, look how good he is on the bottom here as Eckes is trying to figure if there's any grip in the middle. Ty Gibbs, his first appearance here at Iowa Speedway. Christian Eckes has run here a few times already with one top 10 finish to his credit. He also made his NASCAR Gander Outdoors Truck Series debut, did Christian Eckes, last June. Led some laps before finishing eighth. Dave Reef, a lot of talk about strategy in this one going into this 150 lap race. Exactly. Even though their big brothers use the stage process to settle a, a race, they don't do that here in the Arkham and Art Series. Despite that, though, crew chiefs are thinking of it that way. In a perfect world, it would be 50. And then again, at lap 100, you come in, you change your tires. That gives you a pretty good indication of what kind of tire to wear you have. Because the grip here, there is a lot of tire eating going on. But we all know that an early caution could change that. Some of the cars that maybe struggled a little bit could change their pit strategies. But in a perfect world, we're coming in at 50. We're coming in at 100. We'll see how it all plays out. Ah, there's that early caution, guys. We were expecting that one. Melton in the 69 goes around to bring out the first caution. 10 laps into this race here today at Iowa Speedway. Doesn't look like any damage to the 69 whatsoever, but this track, like you said, with the mix of rubber from the general tires of the Arkham Menard series and what we see in the IndyCar series has honestly made for a different twist here for a lot of the competitors throughout the day. Scott Melton is 10th race of the season. It's just a hot slick racetrack. Getting a handle on this surface is not easy. We'll have a good look here and see what maybe affected Scott Melton through the corner to bring out this first caution. Scott Melton coming off the corner, and there you see, just got a little bit loose, got it over-rotated, and did a good job at keeping that car off the inside wall. Scott's had some decent runs, so high hopes for him. Tenth most recently for him at Chicagoland. Chandler Smith leads early in this one, and he has been dominant already here like he has so many times already this year. Well, the driver is going to sit next to him on this double file restart. Once we get things back in order, it'll be Corey Heim, a driver that's racing for a team that's won five times here at Iowa Speedway. Chad Ryan Racing. Chandler Smith hoping for his fourth consecutive Sioux Chief Short Challenge victory here today at Iowa. The subject of today's Bounty Rookie Spotlight 
is Chandler Smith. Nobody has done it better in terms of young drivers in this series. As we mentioned, three consecutive victories in the Sioux Chief Short Track Challenge. Chandler Smith, the teenager out of Talking Rock, Georgia, is setting the ARCA world on end. He has done nothing but magic. He's led all three races he's won. He's led the most laps in all three of those. Toledo, Madison, and most recently at Elko Speedway, the short tracks. But now we come to the Super Speedway of short tracks. He has one start here, but look at these impressive numbers season to season. This kid is somebody to watch here in the Arkham Menard Series. Interesting development right now. Chandler Smith going to lead the field to the green flag, but the series points leader came down pit road. Michael Self and that Sinclair machine down pit road early. You think that was a planned move or that car wasn't handling the Remember, he jumped wanted. in the right side window, Bob. It was amazing to see how quickly they got to the car. Something awry with Michael Self could be a shifter issue, could be electronics. We don't know just yet. We will certainly effort that information, but now set for a green flag. Let's see what Corey Hyde can do in the 22. Chandler going to be able to get the run up off the corner, I believe, be able to take that lead. Indeed he does, and here comes Ty Gibbs. The kid has been just so spectacular, and that monster energy number 18. Corey Heim again had to start on the inside of the front row. He was running on the outside to get the second position. Now he's got a race for Ty Gibbs. He had a great restart, great clean start, but I think just the outside's come in so much quicker. Five teenagers currently in the top five early in this race for the Arkham Menard Series at Iowa. And the oldest one of that is 18 years old. 16-year-old Chandler Smith leading us here. Actually just turned 17 on June 26th. Then we've got Ty Gibbs. He hasn't turned another year until October. It's amazing that 16-year-old has so much talent right now at this young age. 22, Corey Heim on July 5th. He celebrated his birthday in Daytona with his dad. He turned 17 in this 22 driver. The 18-year-old Christian Eckes. Michael Self came down pit road just a short time ago during that caution. What was that about, Dave? Transmission issues. A car that was having problems getting out of fourth gear. They decided to make that early stop here, see if they could address that. Michael Self behind the eight ball, though, but still with 132 laps to get back in this. Well, Dave, we've seen this from this team throughout the year. And Jim, it has been like hero or zero for Michael Self. Three wins to his credit, but he's like a home run hitter this year. That full consistency for the season, even though he leads the points, has not completely been there. Early crash at Daytona, 31st. 15th at Nashville after getting wadded up with another uh, car. Uh, running top five and Gateway. Had an axle issue that cost him big. He finished 13th that day. His only finish is outside the top 10 minus Pocono, which had another issue. He finished 11th there. You're right. It's either up or down, it seems like, for a championship leader. And guys, take it one step further. All those opportunities missed for the 25 team. Don't think they're not back here counting what might have been. We're talking about a pretty close points battle here. But you add up all of those mistakes, the points, the valuable points missing. Michael Self could be running away with this thing. But these little things just keep cropping up. I think the key thing here is those nine top five finishes. That matches the top tens that he has this year. If you look at the most top tens, the second place point man, Brett Holmes, with 11 overall in 13 starts. So Michael Sell's been up and down a little bit, and this just kind of plays into the hands of Brett Holmes, Travis Braden, and his teammate Christian Eck is the top four in the point standings. So with that pit stop, he came out. He's up to about 14th now, was the 25 of Michael Self, now into 12th. As we paint the bigger picture on the points, Chandler Smith is racing just the short tracks, just the Sioux Chief short track challenge. And the question is, this kid's never run dirt before, Bob, but that's coming right quick on our schedule. Two races from now, we go to Pocono, where he can race at age 17, and then we go to two consecutive dirt miles in Illinois. A lot of conversation whether Chandler Smith will be partaking in those dirt track races here as part of the Sioux Chief short track challenge since he leads the point standings. A lot of decisions still to be made. There's Brett Holmes in the 23. He is running in the top 10 now after having to start at the rear of the field. Started in the back. I was surprised I didn't see him on pit road, Bob. This car must be handling the way he wanted it to. He and Bruce Chief Shane Huffman talked about maybe even salvaging the primary. That's how good that car was, but they ended up going to a backup car that has not seen any track time this year. So Self may be in that conservative mode, but guess what? He can't make, gain many points on a car that's right behind him on the racetrack. That green dinosaur closing in, in his rearview mirror, that's the point of Michael Self. The 23 of Holmes, second in points heading into this one. Desperately wanted to have a good run to get some more points on Self, but here he goes on the outside. Wow, Self's car is so good. 
passes Brent Holmes like he's standing still. So that transmission issue may be something with more related to restarts, honestly, than anything during a green flag run. You know, I remember watching the 1992 uh, NASCAR Cup Championship. Alan Quickie lost second gear. He kept it in fourth the whole time. His crew chief that day, Paul Andrews, said we had to keep it in fourth. Otherwise, that car would fall apart. We didn't know if the transmission would blow up. So it may take a while for that 25 himself to gain speed on restarts like I sat in the stands at Atlanta and watched myself in 92 way back when. That comes to mind. <laughs> You're dating yourself. I now. know. Brett Holmes was the biggest mover in this race because, remember, he had to start at the rear of the field. He did not take time in qualifying today. Chandler Smith, however, dominating this race already by a full second, just over a second, over Ty Gibbs, the 16-year-old out of North Carolina. There you see the gap between the top two here, and here are the top five in this race, brought to you by Eugenics here at Iowa Speedway. The Sioux Chief Short Track Challenge as part of the Arkham Menard Series, an 11 race series within a series on the short tracks of America. We've toured many of these fine short tracks and we see Michael Self and Chandler Smith's head pop up. The first five races by those Venturini Motorsports teammates. Now we're into the heart of it. We got Iowa Speedway right now tonight. We've got two dirt races and we wrap it up at Salem Speedway in Indiana and we go to Brownsburg, Indiana, Lucas Oil Raceway in October to see who will win the Sioux Chief Short Track Challenge. Two races in Indiana to wrap up the Sioux Chief Short Track Challenge. That guy is the series points leader for the Sioux Chief Short Track Challenge, Chandler Smith. Over Ty Gibbs so far this year, just like it is right now, currently in the race. During the commercial break, we had a pass for third place on the track. Corey Heim dropping back to fourth now in that Carbon Racing Solutions number 22, while Christian Eckes has climbed up into the third spot. And the way he did it, Bob, was just a nice move. Eckes had momentum on the outside. Corey Hyman, some lap traffic, didn't want to take any chances. But I think Eckes is setting here now to see what he has. We're now, how many races, how many laps into this? 34. Ideally, if they get a pit stop in the next 20 laps or so, it's really good mathematics and information because now they have two full sets of general tires. This track is so fast and so high banked. It's a short track, which the general rule is only you get six tires at short tracks like Salem but you don't have that here. You've got two full sets to use in the pits, and I think they're going to use them tonight. And you see what's happening here. We talked about the cars initially on the low groove, but now Christian Eck is starting to move to the top side. Yeah, and Eckes is so good at finding things out. I mean, he studies things. Uh, his crew chief kept reading, said, man, I wish you got a girlfriend. Something besides racing, that's all Christian's been doing is focused <laughs> I on <know>. getting better. <laughs> and he's so dedicated at it. He's got three starts here already, but has yet to lead a lap. So you know, seeing how he figures this out, great to see how much time he puts into it. So Eckes in the top five. Michael Self steadily climbing his way back through the field. Currently running in the seventh spot, now challenging Carson Hosovar, the kid out of Michigan, just in front of him. So Self uh, making the competition, honestly, look silly in the latter part of this, the field here. If you're just tuning in, he made a pit stop, started on the front row, and made a pit stop early for a shifter issue. But once that car got wound up in top gear, man, he's been really strong in the number 25 Sinclair Oil Toyota. To the bottom he goes. He's been really good on top. Now he's got a challenge for position with Hosomar up there in the 28 Chevy. Score Michael Self now in the sixth spot, Dave Reef. He's absolutely driving like a man possessed. I talked to his crew chief, Shannon Rush, and asked him what he's saying on the radio. He says he's saying absolutely nothing. That means things are going very, very good, but we documented, Shannon, this car having issues in fourth gear. What were you guys able to do so quickly here on pit road? Uh, we just had a guy go over and try and knock it out of gear. Um, I don't think we've remedied the problem yet, but the uh, car's good, so hopefully we can get some green flag races. Do you even need fourth gear at this point? Yeah, that's the only one we need, so I'm glad it's not stuck in third. Thank you. Well, we'll see what happens with Michael Self, the Arkham Menard Series points leader. A little bit of a transmission issue. He came down pit road early in this race, but after that, he has been on fire. Keep an eye on that differential between the leader, Chandler Smith, who's running a 24, a 25.593 his last lap. Michael Self clicking off a 25.701, so about a tenth slower, but that depends on where he is on the racetrack. I think Self may be close this gap even further. It'll be interesting to see where the next caution flag falls because 
teams will tell you after lap 35 if there's a caution they will actually come down pit road take their chance because you don't know in the middle of the race a lot of times we see very long green flag runs there is tim richmond top 10 in arkham menard series points currently running in the 13th spot midway through the season bob he got a hold of this car bought it off of entering motorsports and they've been able to help him get the setup wayne peterson racing has never had a composite body car or an ilmore engine so sunny the dad of Tim Richmond, they got together and said, we need to get a great railing.com car from Venturini to see what we can do here in the intermediate tracks, the super speedways, and they're putting it to use here at Iowa Speedway. They've had a decent run here tonight already. Hosobar having a very good run as well. This team will take the same transporter. They have their prolate model already in that transporter. They will drive to Memphis, Tennessee, and he'll run in the Masters of the Pros event uh, for the prolate model ranks at Memphis on Sunday. And as a 16-year-old driver, he wants to drive everything. It'll be just his second late model race of the year. So he's been really focused on coming here. He's actually been in the pit area at the big tracks, helping as a sign guy, a mechanic, a spotter on occasion for the team when they've had Brandon McReynolds or Rafael Lassard or Stefan Parsons in this car on the super speedways where he's too young to compete. Carson Hosovar has been close, knocking on the door for a victory here with a small handful of top five finishes. He had a great run going at Pensacola, but couldn't quite get there. Several drivers looking for their first victory here this season. Could it be Travis Braden tonight? Maybe Joe Graff could go to victory lane. All of those drivers very strong here today at Iowa Speedway. Fifty laps into the Iowa 150 for the Arkham Menard Series at Iowa Speedway. And Chandler Smith continues to dominate here over Ty Gibbs. This is round seven of the Sioux Chief Short Track Challenge, even though this runs like a super speedway. Here are the points coming in, the overall championship points for the Arkham Menard Series. Right now, Michael Self with a small lead over Brent Holmes, but Self with some trouble here, and there's Christian Eckes lurking back and forth. Yeah, 115 points, Bob. I said earlier 135. It's 115 back to Eckes, and it's five points per position, so as this plays out, we mentioned Eckes making momentum, getting those moves. He's got a lead a lap. That's five more points. Michael Self has yet to lead this race. There is Chandler Smith. Uh, he is already the valve lap leader this year here in the Arkham Menard series and he's just continuing that here today at Iowa Speedway by dominating the opening laps of this race. Now the big question is when everybody wants to pit, when the caution is going to fall or will we see green flag stops here eventually at Iowa Speedway? Relative fall off between the two race leaders, the number 20 of Chandler Swift and this number 18 Marshall Energy Orca Coolers Toyota for Ty Gibbs. They have about the same pace He's maintaining a 0.7 second lead. They haven't changed a whole lot, but this whole degradation of speeds, that may be we have some pit stops. Some pit stop hopefuls coming up very soon. Travis Brayton currently running in the fifth spot, third in the series standings coming into Iowa. Had a crew chief change on that team just a few races ago. Jim Long now directing the shots. Here is the, basically what Travis Brayton has done this year so far. And you can see he been very consistent this season but at the same time Travis Braden was not very good earlier here today they threw everything including the kitchen sink at this car before qualifying and it paid off for him yeah and Travis is really one of the two mechanics on this car Jim Long is a weekend warrior with his team a lot of phone conversations but in the shop it's just Travis and Casey Swift and they are really working hard at getting this car and competing with teams like Venturini who brought four cars to the racetrack with their experience. So see them racing with these guys, a great improvement from what they were frustrated with earlier today in practice and qualifying. Michael Self moving his way by Travis Braden. So Self continuing to march back through the field. Now Michael Self, the series points leader, back up into the top five. And think how hard he's running. I wonder how his tires will wear and how quickly he may want a pit stop here again. There's no mandatory pit stop time. There's no halfway break here in the Arkham Menard series. But these teams, I would think, are seeing the pace set by Chandler Smith saying, if I get tires and Chandler is, I don't know, going to stay out for a while? We don't know the scenarios just yet. But I would think under a caution, if I'm running fifth, sixth, or seventh on the racetrack right now, I'm coming to pit road for my general tires. The number 55 driven by Gavin Harlan. 
Only his second career Arkham Menard Series start currently running in that 12th spot for the former off-road racer. And he has Frank Kimmel as his crew chief. Frank has uh, one win here, 2007. And I talked to Frank about how he's adapting to this racetrack. They did not come in test. Gavin Harlan just his second of three Arca starts this year. They didn't come in test. He said it's been a progress getting him through practice, getting him comfortable with the speeds at this 7 8 mile racetrack. Josevar in the 28, running just outside the top five in the seventh spot. Venturini Motorsports really dominating here today, honestly. First, third, and fifth. Uh, they occupy the top five, and there is Billy Venturini, the team manager. He is also the crew chief for Chandler Smith, the leader of this race. When he's walking, that means one thing. He's not on his pit box where he's worried about his teammates, and perhaps they may want to pit together if it came down to green flag stops. Discussing strategy, and I, and I believe you're correct. That's where Billy, Billy Venturini is doing right now. He's going to some of his teammates here to discuss that pit race strategy. And as I say that, he actually goes into the uh, talking to an Ilmore 18, technician there. talking to a Ilmore engine technician, getting some information from him. Remember, very hot temperatures here today. That heat. Officials that come in here, team representatives for Ilmore as a team coming in to help each and every one of the teams run the Arca Ilmore 396. That's all but one car in the field today. And what Billy may have been asking is there's a separate setting and a jetting that they do for every car. I did ask about the heat today of our Ilmore officials, and they said it's slightly different. The mapping is slightly different because of the heat that they have to encounter. So as Billy's just checking in what that setting was in that brief discussion there. And tackling the heat can be a difficult task for anybody in the starting field, especially if you're a 16-year-old like Ty Gibbs. Uh, comes out of the late model stock car ranks of the Carolinas. Starting for the first time this year in the Arkham Menard series and really doing well, but uh, he's a guy that's not used to these high heat conditions in a stock car like you see here in Arkham. And he's really good at 100 lap, 125 lap races. Yes, he won at Gateway, but it was a much a cooler evening a couple weeks back when he went to Victor Lane. We'll still don't know what the heat's doing to this kid, but it could be the hottest he's ever been in a race car right now. Ty Gibbs could be saving his stuff. Chandler Smith still leading 62 laps into this one. The top five here, anybody has a shot to win today at Iowa. Approaching the halfway point in the Iowa 150 for the Arkham Menard Series. And this is a look at the Geico 411, seven eighths of a mile oval. Now I talked to Billy Venturini earlier this week. He told me that pit window for fuel in between 95 and 105 laps, but right now, Strategy could be very interesting going into the latter part of the race. So, Dave Reeve, I got a big question for you. Billy Venturini is marching up and down pit road right now. What is he telling you in terms of strategy? Well, he was just checking with the Ilmore officials to confirm everything that's in the engine right now. The very next thing he did after getting back up on that pick box was take out that big book, get out his iPhone, and start crunching numbers. It's becoming for him about a fuel window. How far can he go? Because this is a team right now, that, as we've witnessed all night, as everybody at home has witnessed, it's being dominated on the track by Chandler Smith, but it's really being dominated from the box. as calm as he can because Chandler's thinking to himself, hey, we got to be coming in here. Hey, this car's starting to get a little loose, but you know what? Everybody's getting a little loose out there, buddy. You stay calm. I got control up here. Let's go out and win this thing. Billy keeping an eye on Chandler Smith, but I'm sure keeping an eye on this battle as well. Michael Self, another one of his race cars in the 25 green and white machine, trying to work by Corey Heim. And Corey Heim's car not looking all too good at this juncture of the race. That is a battle for fourth. I don't think he has a choice right now in that number 22 Speedway Children's Charities Ford on the outside. That's where he has to run. You see him tossing at the wheel. You can see the wheel jostling back and forth off the corner. Michael Self's wheel not at all an issue as he's really flying through here. It took a while for Michael Self to get to Corey Heim, but he now found some grip on the middle and the bottom of the racetrack making use here going around Timber Twin number 25. Self again had to make a pit stop. He only has fourth gear right now, they think. So indeed, if he has to come to pit road, Bob Undergreen, that's a huge, huge feather in the pedal. Self at 20 years of age, the experience here and working with Trans Am teams as a driver coach and Justin Haley for a couple of seasons. That is the factor that plays in the hand of Michael Self. Yellow flag back out as we take a look at Joe Graff Jr. Currently running in the 11th spot. I'm told debris in turn number one will bring out the caution flag just prior to the halfway point here at Iowa. 
So this is a huge break. Chandler Smith may, may not have wanted to see it because his car is working so well. They know exactly what they have underneath him now. But we are at the halfway point, and now you can really go at it. I'd say, why not everybody come to pit road? I, that's what I was going to say. I think everybody's coming down pit road. It's going to be a crowded place for sure, uh, especially for all the leaders here in the first round of pit stops during this caution flag here. So Chandler Smith uh, dominating this race. Uh, next time by, it'll be 75 laps in. That will be the halfway mark. Dave, what can you tell us? Well, I think this is going to be a very important pit stop. Everybody right now talking to their driver saying, hey, we got a lap. Let's discuss what you're feeling, what we're seeing up here, because this is a track that's going to continue to change as day turns tonight. So every pit stop, it's kind of redundant to say, is the next most critical one. But this one could be with a pit window of, of, of 100 laps. If Chandler Smith and these guys can get the car dialed in just right, it's the same story for Gibbs. If they can get that car dialed in just right. So right now, the most important thing that's going on, that communication between a driver and a crew chief. What are you feeling? How can we fix it? How can we make it better? And the race off of pit road will be very interesting as well because that could have a determining factor in who's going to lead the second half of this race. By the way, there's caution coming out for debris, as we told you. Uh, we are also told that it was off of Eric Caudell's car who hit the wall in turn number one. And Caudell finding some handling issues, had uh, some rear end drive plate concerns after practice as I checked in on that team in their third race in a composite body car. So Chandler Smith, Ty Gibbs, Christian Eckes, Michael Self, and Corey Heim, your top five here. A little different in terms of the Sioux Chief Short Track Challenge because in this particular race, because of the inner li liners on these general tires, everybody has two full sets of tires on pit road. So Chandler Smith come to pit road, nearly lose it on the apron, that transition coming to pit road. He's the first one down. He's all the way down and pit in, uh, pit out, excuse me. Chandler Smith pulls his Craftsman number 20 to the attention of the Fetterini Motorsports team. Should be a four-tire stop for everybody here at Iowa Speedway. Halfway through this one. Again, these teams practice. Who will get off of pit road first? Christian Eckes with a lightning fast stop. Eckes and Ty Gibbs racing off the pit road. But it appears as though Chandler Smith and others, very strong as well. And right here, Michael Self got a clean launch off of his pit road stop. It was not perfect. He couldn't jump on the gas and spin the tires to get out of his pit box. Very deliberate on the exit for Michael Self coming off pit road. And he is so thankful he got the pit under this caution to save him a whole lot of track position because of that transmission issue they're fearing in that pit. What's up, Dave? Boy, just stand and watching Chandler Smith and that team ascend on that race car, get everything done, get kicked out. The first person on the radio afterwards, Billy Venturini, he sounded absolutely like a cheerleader out there, giving his guys high fives, telling them they did a great, great job. They did that, and again, 20 car continues to have a stranglehold on this thing. Car is a lap down, coming down pit road here for the Arkham and Art Series in the Iowa. In the top 10. We'll be right back. It's possible. Just past the halfway point in the Arkham Menard Series, Iowa 150 at Iowa Speedway here on MAV TV. Chandler Smith is the leader. He's led every lap so far here in this race. Pure domination for that Craftsman number 20 for Venturini Motorsports. Let's take a look at the Richmond Water Heaters race recap. And right from the get-go here, honestly, the 22, Corey Heim, the teenager, was on a charge. He went right behind our pole sitter for the jump star pole. We got the outside, he the jump on the field, and Corey advanced quickly from fourth to second early on here in the 22. Only two cautions in this race, one of them for Scott Melton. So Scott Melton spinning off of turn number two. Brett Holmes, by virtue of a crash, a loose oil fitting, Crash their primary, went to a backup. He was on the move early, the biggest mover in this race into the top 10 after starting at the rear. We've seen some great action here. This is the battle for third between Corey Heim and Christian Eckes early on. Chandler Smith, nobody has anything for him yet. <laughs> yet. Ty Gibbs could be sleeping there in the second spot and just being patient, waiting out his time, but only one leader so far in this race. And ultimately, Ty Gibbs was less than a second for lap after lap after lap, keeping pace with Chandler Smith. Gibbs in the 18, Smith in the 20 will lead us back to the start. We'll see who gets the jump here. Getting ready for another restart, Dave. 
Quickly, a chance to talk with Mark McFarland. You guys have been running second most of the night. You've kept your distance right where it is. Are you kind of keeping them at bay? Do you got more cards you can play? Uh, I hope so, but uh, we made a little adjustment there. Uh, he was a little too free, so we'll see if we helped him or not, see if we did enough, and then uh, maybe we'll get one more shot out of here and uh, go get him. Think you got enough time? Yeah, yeah, we do. Ty Gibbs, who earlier this year became the 335th different ARCA winner. Guy's known for finishing second. I guarantee he's steaming in there, not wanting to finish second again tonight in Iowa. Yeah. Mark McFarland, the crew chief for that young number 18 driver, Ty Gibbs. He oversaw things at MDM last year. What did they do? Mark McFarland was part of the teams that finished first, third, and fourth here at Iowa Speedway. Michael Self, transmission issues early on, has climbed back into the top five. He'll line up there for the restart, but he pulls down. So apparently those transmission issues still plaguing that 25 team. Yeah, he's stuck in fourth gear, Bob. It's going to take a while to get up to speed. A la Kawuki in 92, but he got to the chance to get the lead, and we saw how quickly Michael Self got to the top five positions in that long green flag run. And that's the key thing for him. They probably just got it jammed into fourth gear. He'll struggle on restarts. Not struggling on any restarts here today is the 22 machine for that 17-year-old out of Marietta, Georgia. The 22 of Corey Heim, one of the hottest young drivers in America right now, running in the late model stock car ranks, the super late model ranks, picking off a win in the Cars Tour last year, and now vying for his first ever victory here in the Arkham Menard Series. And Corey is set. He got the a test at Pocono in June prior to the race. He's going to race now that he's of age in our next race at Pocono Raceway this coming weekend on a big track. So he's really got three big tracks in a row, if you call it, if you call it that. He got the race at Gateway, top five there. He got to race here, and now he's going to race at Pocono. So in terms of experience, going from those 100, 125 lap races or 200 lap races like he just ran in the late model stock, I think he's really clicking with this team and Paul Andrews. I love the comparison that we talked about today when we were in the pit area with Corey Heim, and he said, you know what? I ran Legends cars for years in Pocono, even though it's a huge racetrack, 2.5 miles in length, a tri-oval. He said, honestly, some of my Legends car prowess kind of pays off there at Pocono without how you have to back up your corner without you have to drive that race car. Every corner is different, and the same can be said for the Legends car competition, even though it's a smaller race car. And as many laps as he turned in Atlanta and Charlotte on those small ovals on inset inside the circle, we have one of those here at Iowa Speedway, too, separating uh, the front stretch and pit lane. So it's great to see that, that short, those short tracks have paid off for Corey as he steps his way through here to the Arkham Bernard Series. Corey Heim's teammate is the 77 at Chad Bryant Racing for Joe Graff Jr. And Graf is trying to get actually into the top 10. He's battling with Caden Honeycutt. This is a battle for position on the racetrack. Honeycutt, the driver out of Texas, has been running some dirt modified stuff down there, making an occasional appearance here in Arca. But Graf, man, he's been so up and down this year uh, before the last race. He had finished outside the top 10 twice. Before that, Four straight top ten finishes. A roller coaster year for Joe Graff Jr. For Graff and his crew chief and team owner, Chad Bryant, they actually made up two laps at Elko Speedway, one race ago to finish seventh. I think if he has the pace here and race with Caden Honeycutt, if he can get that car right, and now that we've got fresh general tires on it and a chance to make an adjustment, we saw Graff now scooting past him with an abrupt move to the bottom. Remember, he ran the NASCAR Xfinity Series race here for Richard Childress Racing a few weeks back, so uh, one of several different starts that he's going to make. Michael Selt to the inside of Christian Eckes. Remember, these two, plenty of drama at Elko. Very close right there coming off the corner, and you see Michael Self had to grab that wheel. He got a little loose underneath Christian Eckes. Yeah, I noticed something there. It was Michael Self racing to the inside. These are the drivers that got involved in that last lap tussled up those speedway. The 15 car of Christian Eckes had the position. Self looked low on that last lap. He's looking low here, and I think Christian just said, I'm going to come down the track and not give you that I chance right, right now, teammate in the 15. Yes, and they settled things honestly here. Let's take a look at what happened right here to the bottom side of the racetrack with the 25. Left front wheel is what I want to study on the 25 car. Look how he climbs the track trying to keep that speed, but he also cocked it to the right and then to the left. He did not want to get into his teammate. He gave room to Eckes on the outside, but self-respectful there, knowing his car was washing up the racetrack and stayed off as much as he could, and it worked for them. A foot difference 
in the width there. It could have been a lot closer. Arrow plays a big factor here on this 7 eighths of a mile racetrack, and it looked like he might have gotten a, a little arrow tight on the inside of Christian Eckes, and, and that related to a little wiggle there up underneath him. But a good job by Mac Michael Self to keep that car straight and keep it going. He's the series points leader, and this is a big race to continue his lead here in the Arkham Menard Series. And really a second and a half off pole speeds now with these general tires now coming in after these pit stops. 15 laps on these tires, we see Self really going after it. These are high-speed corners, trying to get every position he can to keep that point lead. The top five here at Iowa, presented by Nugenic. Nearly 100 laps complete in the Arkham Menard Series during the Iowa 150 at Iowa Speedway. Chandler Smith has led every single one of them. So last year at Salem Speedway, it was a vindication race for him. He ran second to the last lap in the spring race. In the fall race, he led all but one lap there. This kid's making it look easy, isn't he? We talked about transmission issues for Michael Self. Let's get an update with Dave Reed. Well, just to confirm what we told you earlier, that car, the 25 Sinclair machine, only has fourth gear. That is it. That is why it stumbles off the start. That's why it stumbles getting off of pit road. But having said that, there is no concern, according to crew chief Shannon Rush, that that car will have any other issues transmission related. It's his hope that they can stay out and continue to make green flag stops. I've been watching him click off lap times, including a tense moment during our commercial break when he had to pass Christian Eckes. The 25 car on the racetrack right now is one of the fastest cars. And as long as this thing stays green, he is actually clipping off lap times a little bit quicker than our race leader. Michael Self currently running in fourth, but the big problem for him is if we have a caution, he's going to lose a bunch of spots. The number 32 driven by a teenager, Colby Howard, currently running in eighth for that Kevin Sawinski-led team. Uh, this is another arc of start for him. We saw him at Salem, Indiana last year. Had a very good run. This kid has been awfully tough in the pro late model ranks here this year around the South. Anthony Campy Racing has three victories with this young driver in their pro late model. He also has more on his mind. Project Hope Foundation in his native South Carolina. They have five different schools working with kids that have autism and servicing those people through different organizations. Great to see Colby Howard back in the car. Again, with a cause-related effort, it takes a lot to get here, but he certainly wants to make awareness with the, the Project Hope Foundation. That's part of what he does in representing them and gaining awareness. Less than 50 to go, and what I see is a little trend. Uh, Colby Howard running the uh, super late model and pro late model ranks in the second. second spot and I got to think honestly that Ty Gibbs is saving his stuff for the end of this race this kid just gets better as the green flag run just wears on at every racetrack we've seen him at third place the number 22 of Corey Heim had it Michael Self wants it but the caution comes out not what Michael Self wanted to see and Self again all that winding up now he's got to reset debris on the racetrack brings out a third caution there you see the debris up in the corner here at Iowa Speedway as the yellow flag comes out again. Not many cautions in this one, but you never know. At the end of the race, things could certainly change. Is that a, not sure exactly Water bottle what maybe. Is. Water bottle with the uh, tape on top so the driver can quickly grab it. Thought maybe it was a arm cast from a kid riding a bicycle. It's midsummer after all. I imagine there's a lot of kids that are going through the ER with wrist injuries after playing outside all day. You know, in the olden days, you'd keep a water bottle inside that race car, throw yeah. it out when you needed a caution. Uh, this guy didn't need a caution either. Or Chandler roll bar Smith. padding or yes. any of those other famous things. Absolutely. Uh, Chandler Smith has been so impressive. Been watching him in the late model ranks uh, since he was 12 years old. Uh, uh, barely old enough to see up over the wheel, honestly, in a pro late model. Uh, Ricky Turner was his crew chief, who also really tuned Chase Elliott that we see as a winner in the Cup Series right now. So Chandler Smith ha has been taught by a lot of good people. And Billy Venturini is the latest in that tutelage. And his dad, Mike, and his mom, Lori, they've got kids at home that aren't into racing. He's the first one in the generation to go racing, but it started at a very early age. And now that you can run at age 15 in the Arkham Art Series, age 15 in the k Pro Series East or West, they got him in a late model, a full-on late model at age 12. He made the, the uh, Snowball Derby at what, age 13, 14? I mean, he's been at some very high-profile events and running long-distance races now. He's 17. It's five years of racing this way already. How about this? 
seven siblings is what Chandler Smith has. So uh, he definitely had to fight within that household to make sure uh, that, that he got what he wanted. Pits are open right now, so we expect all of the top running cars to come down pit road. The debris is cleaned up, and there they are, Jim. Everyone coming down pit road. 22 of Corey Heim will come down pit road in the third position. He's pitted prior to where Chandler Smith has to go all the way down pit road, but that was a great stop on stop number one for Smith to get that advantage. Coming all the way down pit road first and leaving first to lead each and every lap thus far. Chandler Smith in the 20 had a great pit stop. The 22 of Corey Heim comes onto pit road in the third spot. This could be a big race right here for track position. Who comes off of pit road first? And there you see that number 20 car rolled forward just a little bit as that team went to change the left side tires. Oh, the 20 with a bad pit stop here. Ty Gibbs is going to make his way off of pit road, possibly first if Christian Eckes doesn't pass him. So trouble for Chandler Smith on pit road in that 20. May I say that's the second blemish all year for this 20 team. They had an axle issue. In one race, that's the only finish outside the top 10. That was a critical moment, not to have that car just perfect in and out of the pits. And if you look at that pit stop, when that team went to the left side, Chandler Smith had that car roll just ever so slightly. That might have slowed down the pit stop. A beautiful night here in Newton, Iowa. It's the Arca Menard Series with the Iowa 150. And we have a new leader, Ty Gibbs. What world you want? Welcome back to the Arkham and Art Series, Iowa 150 at Iowa Speedway. I am Bob Dillner, Jim Trado with us, as well as Dave Reef. A lot of action here on this caution period. Everyone coming down pit road, including the leader, Chandler Smith. And what we, what we want you to take a look at here is the team did a great job on the right side of this race car. Actually, the jack fell right there. The jack fell right away. That slowed down the pit stop. Then they go around to the left side, and the car went forward. A slow pit stop took Chandler Smith, the race dominator, out of the lead. And if you ever done a pit stop, the right rear, the left rear changer was also in position. He had to move over that foot the car rolled to get those lugs on and off as quick as he could. That was upsetting as well on the flow and the timing and the rhythm of the left side tire change. Hmm, interesting. Chandler Smith has been so good. Will he be able to work his way back up? He will line up in the sixth spot. The front row now occupied by race leader Ty Gibbs and Christian Eckes, who sits fourth in the point standings. Ty Gibbs has not led a lot of laps this year, but when he led in the, off of turn four at Gateway, he was in position. He got to Sam Mayer, got into contact, and went on to win that race, but he's not led a ton of laps. He's been in position, though, to race and finish in that second spot numerous times this year. What do you think about Michael Self, those transmission issues, that transmission locked in fourth gear might be a rough restart for him. He dropped to the inside on the last restart. We'll see what he does here. He may just try to stick with it. And if the other cars around him and they all have spotters on the roof talking to each other, they may be aware of the issue. I don't know if Self's going to be that generous at this point. Although we do have over 40 laps left here, 40 to go when we get back to the green flag. We'll see what this 25 team does with Self, who dropped back four or five, six spots, and then they had to come back through as that transmission stuck in fourth gear finally got into the rhythm of full speed. What's important for Michael Self is not necessarily this restart, but the overall points picture. He's battling for a championship. He might want to pull down to the bottom and then just work his way back up like he had been. We'll find out what happens here. Eckes and Ty Gibbs. Michael Self pulls to the bottom to let everybody by until he gets up to speed. Christian Eckes, best we've seen out of him. But that run off of turn number two on the outside, just too good for Ty Gibbs. Good run by Eckes, but here comes Corey Heim. Look at this young short tracker making his way known. He started on the outside of the second row, moved to second early on. In the top five, Corey Heim's been all day in the car number 22, crew chief by Paul Andrews. Let's go down to Dave. I just talked to Paul Andrews, and I said, what do you have here? Can you show some cars late in this race? And he says, we're pretty darn good on short runs right now. As long as these yellows keep coming out, they think that they're in really good position. Corey loves the race car, and everybody knows what Paul Andrews can do on the box. I mentioned to Paul Andrews about the successes here, and look at this battle right, on. right among them. Hold on. Chandler Smith thought about going three wide there for just a moment. We were wondering whether Chandler Smith can battle his way back to the front. I think we're answering it right here. He's dancing on the bottom on that yellow line in the very bottom of the corner, getting positioned, and Smith looks angry. 
The looks point. ready to attack here. Wherever Corey Heim goes, Smith will go. Oh, contact between Chandler Smith and Corey Heim. That opens up the door for Christian Eckes to the inside of his teammate at Venturini Motorsports in a battle for third. Better move by Eckes trying to get up there. Get that air disturbed off the 20. Don't give him room to recover. Get him in line to keep him one spot behind him here. Didn't work for long, though. Three wide momentarily there off the corner. They head into turn number three. What will Chandler Smith do now? Remember, everybody getting fresh general tire rubber on this last caution period. Everybody's good to go, but let's take a look at what happened there as they went down into the corner. Chandler Smith getting into the back of Corey Heim, who came up the racetrack ever so slightly. Yeah, Smith, I think, expected him to follow the 18 off the corner, came up the track, and this tap could have been really big. Watch the left front wheel of the number 22 as he sawed away from the bump from behind from the 20 of Smith. Chandler Smith, fastest car on the racetrack. To the inside of Corey Heim, looks like he'll be able to dispose of that Chad Bryant racing number 22 this time. Maybe in one felt swoop, go for the lead as well. The 18 of Ty Gibbs has led since the restart. Smith came out sixth after that pit stop. Debacle on pit road, and here he goes back to the point. Chandler Smith back to the lead with 35 laps to go. That did not take any time whatsoever. Now keep in mind, Ty Gibbs has been able to pace with Chandler Smith. Smith has now, in anger I would call it, moved into the lead. He passed five other cars. Ty Gibbs has not been able to keep that pace, but guess what? He knows there's a lot of racing left to done, be done here in the number 18. Corey Heim to second. Corey Heim in the 22, that short run speed like Paul Andrews told Dave Reeve, very strong on that 22, but he has struggled on the long run. So he gets to second. Can he close the door on Chandler Smith? The way Gibbs went through that corner and he's now losing space to the 22. That last set of gentle tires, again, it comes down to tire pressure, making those adjustments. We didn't see a wrench go in the window. Mark McFarland, if he did anything, changed the air temperatures on the tires. Either he grew it or wanted to grow. Maybe it's not to the liking yet of this number 18 car. Again, we pit it on lap 104. You know, at the same time, maybe Mark McFarland calling the shots in terms of tire pressures there to be better later into the run yeah. at the close of this race. Yep. Now we're 32 laps to go. It's basically a regular Friday night short track event here on the big track of Iowa. And it's hard to catch a cannonball when it's in motion. Chandler Smith has been on a run leading the first half of this race. Now getting back to the point, that's his critique, Billy Venturini. Watch it with great interest. Billy Venturini, the son of two-time ARCA champion Bill Venturini, and he has taken over the reins of this team over the course of the last couple of years, and his cars have been flat out tough to beat this year. You know, they've really built a good in-shop group. Those, those teammates have really hung hard together. They create the cars on the same shop, they build the cars identically, they set them up identically, and adding Kevin Reed to the mix last year. Getting Shannon Rush to work with Michael Self all season long and run for the championship. Having Frank Kimmel and Dave Weiner, those guys are critical to this team's success this year. A big wiggle out of Michael Self in the corner before this. This is third, fourth, and fifth on the racetrack. Ty Gibbs, not as good, Dave Reef, as before that restart. Absolutely not. Mark McFarland says they're just finding the condition that it continues to be loose. And because of that, He's going the wrong way, and of course, he's got the championship contenders right behind him as well. But Mark McFarland's also said that he's very, very hopeful that with a good long green flag run here, that car will start to come together. The only problem is, is Chandler Smith starting to run away again. And Michael Self is rebounding nicely after having to pull to the inside with a transmission issue. If you're just joining us, that car stuck in fourth gear, so on restarts, very slow to come up to speed for the 25 of Michael Self. But look at this, he picks off two spots here in about a lap and a half, move Michael Self up to third. Responding well is the number 25 of Michael Self. Again, those slow restarts, taking all that time and effort to get forward. Certainly has a better handling car at this point with under 28 laps to go. Ty Gibbs leads here. Actually, Ty Gibbs, I apologize, looking for another win. A battle at Gateway got that victory, but right now falling back here at Iowa. Possible. Getting down to the end of the Iowa 150 for the Arkham Menard Series here in Newton, Iowa. Chandler Smith back to the front of the field. He leads in that Craftsman number 20. 
a pretty good advantage over Corey Heim running in second, nearly three seconds the advantage for Chandler Smith. That is just crazy, Bob. At this racetrack, Chandler's only been here one time before. Veteran Motorsports started the season by going to every track prior to the race and testing. They did not do that here at Iowa Speedway. Other teams did. This is proving that Chandler Smith is clicking with Billy Venturini. They are working magic. They led, again, more laps in the last three races that they won on the short tracks. But coming into this race, it was an unknown. We thought Michael South might have been the dominator because of the experience here. Corey Hyman, the 22, did test here with his teammate Joe Graffa's hot, slick conditions. And his crew chief, Paul Andrews, told me before the race, with that test and what they learned today, those late race adjustments may be the difference. And Paul said the track will tighten up. I think if I tighten the car up and I get a long run at the end, it came in from one of you before. This team, Chad Bryant Racing, has had five races under Cunningham Motorsports banner at Iowa Speedway alone. And it was really, really good to see how good they were in the speed charts with the 22 of Corey Heim and their teammate Joe Graff today. Michael Self has battled transmission issues throughout the evening. He's been able to be successful in climbing his way back through the field, currently in the third spot. Listen, if we have another caution, Michael Self is going to lose a bunch of spots. He's hoping to go green the rest of the way. Does he have enough time to close in on the leader? I don't think so, but he can certainly get Corey Heim in that second spot just in front of him. And then a big gap to Christian Eckes in the fourth spot. Surprising to see Eckes now in this position. I thought for sure Christian, with his experience here, three prior starts in the Arca Racing, Arca Menard Series here, racing at Iowa Speedway and that Truck Series start. I was surprised to see, I am surprised to see, that he's six seconds back of the leader, Chandler Smith, right now, knowing how evenly these cars are rolled off the hauler. Oh, oh we just saw Wiggle there, didn't we? Yes, he's got more than a handful, more to worry about than Chandler Smith right now. He's got to get that car pointed. It's Difficult loose. Difficult time for Christian Eckes. We go back to fifth now, and that's where Ty Gibbs runs looking to get back on track he had a consecutive run of top 10 finishes broken six straight broken at Elko in Minnesota last week now him and Jim Long the new crew chief for this team knocking on the door getting back in the top five a very good run in terms of where they were earlier in the day and knowing the speed of Ty Gibbs, regardless of the issue he has, I'd say the 27 of Braden is right where he wants to be. He knows now the competition is where he has it. He knew he has a top five car now. That's important for this latter half of the season. That's exactly what Travis told me early in the race. He said they have found some newfound speed. Now it's just about the setup underneath of the race car that can match that speed. But he feels very, very good about the direction that this 27 team is going, especially right now, advancing a position past the 18. Travis Braden, the two-time. Arca CRA Super Series champion out of West Virginia. A smart kid, too, with an engineering degree out of the University of West Virginia. Two engineering degrees, aerospace and mechanical engineering. He's putting his arms to work, though. He's been wrenching a lot on this race car, getting it ready between Elko and here at Iowa Speedway. Quick turn for that team. This car here is so dominant for Chandler Smith. Billy Venturini really fine-tuning that car. Battle for... Second, no more. Michael Self able to get the spot over Corey Heim. So Corey Heim very fast on the restarts, fading back just a little bit. That's what we've seen characteristically out of the 22 tonight. But Michael Self has got a very good race car despite that transmission issue. And Self is making that experience pay off here. We talked about the 10 prior starts in different divisions, including here in the Arkham Menard Series. His gap right now, 4.2 seconds for that green and white number 25 Sinclair oil machine. He is 4.2 back of the leader, his teammate Chandler Smith. He'll need a caution, but maybe not need a caution because of that transmission issue. He's got to make it up here on the racetrack. Here comes Carson Hosevar to the inside of Ty Gibbs. Ty Gibbs continues to fade back here. He'll now lose the sixth spot to Carson Hosevar. Hosevar has finished six in two consecutive ARCA races. Yeah, you know, I mentioned we're here with the IndyCar Series. Well, his spotter today is IndyCar Series spotter Bob Jeffries. Bob is actually a spotter in stock cars as well. I said, when's the last time you spotted for a stock car, not Penske's <laughs> IndyCar? He said, about four weeks ago, Cole Custer here at Iowa Speedway. And, and just to tell you who Bob Jeffries has yeah. spotted for, Tony Stewart, uh, you know, three-time Cup Series champion, Kevin Harvick, Cup Series champion as well. So Bob Jeffries, a veteran of the sport, really guiding Carson Hosevar, currently running in sixth now with just 10 laps to go next time by. Yeah, really a big help to have Bob Jeffries working with a team that's never been here before. This is a super late model team going ARCA racing. Now they're going, uh, going to finish maybe in another top five spot for Carson Osvar. He's finished between third and sixth all but one race this year. Chandler Smith going by Eric Caudell. Had some difficulty twice in this race, but has hung on Caudell in that seven running in 13th. 
Going by Rick Clifton down the Ohio Ag Equipment, number 11, a brand new car to the Andy Hillenberg fleet. Good to see Rick back out there as well. Wow, that was a close call. Tim Richmond, the air comes off of that race car. He spins on the front stretch with nine laps to go and hits the inside retaining wall. This, honestly, Jim Trado, not good for the man who sits second in this race, Michael Self. He did not want to see this caution. Under any other circumstance, with the lead at four seconds, it would have been Michael Self's dream to have this opportunity. But only having fourth gear on this restart, he will have six or seven laps before this race gets to the checkered flag. He'll have to do everything he possibly can to keep up with the leader on the restart. Look at how loose Chandler Smith is. But here he comes, and Tim Richmond doesn't know he's there, kind of squeezes him. And when the cars get that close, the air kind of came off the 06, and Tim Richmond went around and hit that inside retaining wall. Part of the issue also is how quickly he came up upon the 11 of Clifton and the 06. I think Richmond just got spooked a bit when that car went so fast by on the right side. Here's another look at the hit. Onto that wall, you talked about a new composite car for this team here. Tim Richmond, top 10 in the point standings coming into Iowa. Making his debut at Pocono with this car back in June. Finished 14th then. So, I mean, he's finishing 14th, 15th, really building on a season that is his first ever in stock car racing after racing spec Miatas and Formula cars in, in road racing. So what do you think Michael Self is saying Boy. now, sitting yeah. in that second spot? I gave you two ways to look at it. <laughs> Man, I wish I had a caution to close it up. Oh, I don't want a caution to have fourth gear. It's hard to predict, but Self has been so good and knows so much about restarts here. Uh, compared to the competition, Self has, here's one more look. Like a, I think Chandler almost got in the wall trying to avoid the he 06. Did. He did. It was a close call for Chandler Smith up against the wall there. Hey guys, just listen into the Aventurini radio about where they want to do this restart. They're going to stay out, whether they should go high or whether they should go low. The big concern is with Michael Self running in second. If they go to the low side, then that puts Michael on the outside grid, and that's going to really bottleneck everybody. So they feel like their best shot is to go up there on the top side, make everybody go around Michael Self, who's struggling with that transmission issue. So look for the 20 car to line up on the outside for this restart. Dave, you mentioned the team of Venturini Motorsports lining up fourth on this restart if no one pits as pits are open, is their third teammate, Christian Eckes. So if he starts behind Michael Self on the outside, he'll have to do something to get around Michael quickly. So that's part of this team strategy that plays in. We have multiple cars on this restart. If Self's on the outside, it may not benefit Christian Eckes. So that may be another part of the decision they're going to make. Tim Richmond on pit road. Now remember, uh, this is how these guys started. You see Brett Holmes. And that number 23 machine, second in points coming into here. He crashed his primary car when an oil fitting came loose. He was fastest in practice at the time. Tough break for Brett, Shane Huffman, and that crew had to go to this backup car. Had not been run this year. And this is an interesting move, but a, I believe a good call by Mark McFarlane to bring Ty Gibbs down pit road. And these tires are going back on this race car. So the team that started the race and got up to second, they got the lead on pit stops. Again, they can only change four tires twice, so these tires are going back on the car that they used prior in this race. Likely the car, the, the tires they used for the first 75 laps, and just to get that car right, it get ties something. They can raise the pressures now with so few laps left, but they have to get tie a better handling race car as loose as that car was. Brent Holmes was running 10th when he came down pit road. Ty Gibbs, by the way, in that 18 was the final car on the lead lap in seventh, so they had nothing to lose. And Brett Holmes has points to gain if he can get another two positions or get a chance to get the free pass here. He'll pay all the difference for Holmes, who currently is 10th, one lap down. By the way, Joe Graham Jr. now in the top 10. There is Ty Gibbs. So he'll have better tires for this restart. Dave Reef. No chance to catch up with Mark McFarland again. We talked about the fact the car was loose. It was going the wrong way. You changed back to some tires. You probably made some pressure adjustments there. What else can you do to, to give Ty an opportunity here to try to close this thing out better? Yeah, I think we just had a different set of tires there. We were pretty decent, and then uh, it just went really, really loose. So we put the other set back on. They don't have many laps on them, and uh, just let him rip, let him rip around the top. What kind of encouragement you got to give him now, or does he not even need that? No, he don't need that. He's, he's good to go. See what they can salvage. Ty Gibbs had finished second three times before winning at Gateway, and it was like a big sigh of relief for him. And he's got 35 lap old tires that they put on the set that have fewer laps on. They put on lap 75, lap 104, 35 lap tires, higher pressures. Mark McFarland is a crew chief, a bunch of confidence in this young driver. We'll see how far Ty Gibbs can get after that pit stop. 
When we get the green flag, it'll be under five to go for Chandler Smith. I believe, like Dave kind of talked about, he'll take that outside to allow Michael Self to pull down to the inside of the racetrack. Michael's going to lose several spots here. I don't know if he has enough time to gain many spots back here, which is under five to go. And that's the risk. He's had to baby on restarts. He doesn't have time to baby on the restart. He really has to get into that fourth gear range very quickly, maybe as soon as the back stretch, and try to hold position. He might even get a little bit wider in the rear bumper, if you know what I mean, to hold position on cars that are trying to stream past him. Hey, guys, in addition to the discussion about where Chandler Smith would line up for this restart, there was also some plenty, com plenty good conversation about how confident Chandler Smith is right now. He says it's the best race car he's had all night. Can he take it to victory lane? We're about to find out. I think the answer is yes. Christian Eckes wants to get back to Victor Lane for the second time this year. He will line up just behind his Venturini Motorsports teammate. The person to maybe gain some here is Carson Hosovar, who will line up third on the outside because Michael Self's got to pull out of the way of Corey Heim, although Corey Heim has been very good on restarts. And Corey Heim's been really good on the bottom on restarts. So if Michael Self doesn't get all the way down, that'll give advantage to the number 15 of Eckes and the 20 to Hosevar running on the outside on this restart behind our leader, the number 20 of Chandler Smith. Crucial restart right here. Hosevar going three wide. Heim did get stuck behind Self there too. Hosevar up to third. Can Eckes close the gap on Chandler Smith? I think Chandler Smith is just too strong. But Hosevar, look at him wheel it coming off the corner. Right behind him is Joe Graff up the fourth. Where did he come from? Exactly. Great restart for Joe Graff out of New Jersey in the 77. Watch Joe Graff in that eat sleep race machine. Running it fourth. Michael Self right there. Involved as well. Self to the inside. And look at that battle there between the 22, the 18, and so forth. Coming to the white flag this time by. Swing refresh, Bob. Joel Graff is a lap down, but a great restart from that seventh spot. Here comes Chandler Smith to see the white flag. What a big gap between he and Christian Eckes. Osovar closing in on that 15 and second, but I don't think he's got enough time unless he bonsais it in the corner. Michael Self coming on strong as well. Michael Self to the inside of Carson Hosevar. Self up to third. Hosevar tried to take that line away off a of turn two, but Self ducked to the bottom and right past them. Chandler Smith makes it look easy here at Iowa. His fourth consecutive victory in the Sioux Chief Short Track Challenge. Wow. You look up dominance, honestly, in the dictionary, you'll see a picture of this 20 car for Venturini Motorsports and Chandler Smith. A Venturini Motorsports sweep of the podium here at Iowa Speedway. Chandler, Christian Eckes, and Michael Self, your point leader, the top three. We'll see that big old kiss from Bill Venturini, that Chicago Italian tradition here amongst the corn of Iowa here in Newton. We'll be right back. Make the world you want. Chandler Smith led the Sioux Chief Short Track Challenge. Point standings coming into this race, round number seven of that championship within the Arca Menard Series. And he just lengthens that lead now with another victory. Let's take a look at the results here. Venturini Motorsports, the top three. Carson Hosovar bounces back. It's back in the top five with a good fourth place run. With that late pit stop, Ty Gibbs did a couple of spots. He came up to fifth at the finish. Corey Heim got stuck for just a moment behind Michael Self and ends up sixth. Second and third in the point standings. Brett Holmes second winds up in eighth. Travis Braden third in the series point standings winds up in the seventh spot. Joe Graham Jr. winds up ninth a lap down. Yeah, Caden Honeycutt, we thought we'd see a really good run out of him. He and Tony Furr working on it. Hope to see more out of Caden Honeycutt here in future races. Finishes 11th today in that board. I think we're going to see a little celebration in Victory Lane here tonight at Iowa. For that, let's go down to Dave Reed. Hey, the only thing better than a trip to Victory Lane on a hot night here in Iowa is a cold drink of water and a cold bath. That's what Chandler Smith is about to get when he exits this car. Quick, cool drink right now. He's coming out now with four straight short track wins, getting the hat on. Chandler is about to get wet. I'm going to stand back because this is going to get to be fun here, guys. This entire Venturini Motorsports team is here in Victory Lane. And here he comes to a welcome shower. And first there to congratulate him, the man on the box, Billy Venturini. Chandler, 
What an incredible race. Hold on, got to get out of the way for this. <laughs> There's no doubt that this team entirely dominated that race, but it was very much in question after a pit stop. Take me through what it was like from the, from the seat of that car. Yeah, same deal with just like Elko. When that deal happened, when I spun out, just got to keep my calm. That's what won us the race at Elko, and it's what it did tonight. You know, I can't thank Billy, all these Venturini guys enough. They gave me a heck of a Craftsman 828 Logistics, Quick Tie Products. Thank you, Toyota Camry. Thank you, General Tire, enough for all this, this great tire you put on for the show today as well. Four straight short track wins. You're dominating. The short track challenge, does it get any better than this? No, not at all. <laughs> Billy, step in here real quick. You're standing here. I spent a lot of time with you. There was plenty of emotion, both good and bad. I, you know, I love what we do. I love racing. I love that we get to represent Toyota and get to work with the great people at TRD and uh, and get drivers like Chandler Smith, man. This is just, it's been, it's so much fun, and we're just, the team right now is clicking, the driver's clicking, and we're, I mean, we're pretty tough to handle right now. I mean, we're just, we're just, hey, you can tell we're on all eight cylinders, man. Hey, I think you, you got a kiss, you got a hug. There's probably some guys back there you ought to go give some high fives to as well. Chandler Smith picking up the win here tonight at the Iowa 150, the Arkham and Art Series. What a dominating performance performance by this young man. Christian Eckes comes up just a little bit short. He talked to Michael Self. Both of those guys solidly in the top three, but it's Chandler Smith with the big win tonight at I. Six wins now on the Arkham Menard series for that teenager just 17 years old out of Georgia. Chandler Smith wins here at Iowa Speedway. Crush the competition here tonight, leading all but 11 laps at Iowa Speedway. Let's take a look at the Lucas Oil Race recap for the Arkham Menard Series. And this was a crucial pit stop, a slow pit stop by Chandler Smith, and that took him out of the lead. That really was the only time that he did not have the lead on this pit stop. He lost to Ty Gibbs, he restarted sixth, came back, got a little tussle with Corey Hyman, his anger and the angst to get forward. Took the lead back about lap 115 and escaped this near call as well with Tim Richmond, the lap card, spent to the inside. Final lap, Michael Self gets by Carson Hosobar for third, crucial in the championship battle. But it's Chandler Smith picking up his fourth victory of the season here. Five Comes points, in Iowa. five points Self picked up by that one pass, five points per position, finishing second behind Eckes, or third, excuse me. <laughs> Pizza in victory lane. Hot pizza on a hot night. I don't know about that. You want some? <laughs> Let's go to Dave. There is Christian Eckes and Michael Self talking on pit road. Remember all that drama at Elko Speedway. Uh, the contact on the final lap and Michael Self uh, admitting fault for that incident. Uh, today they finish second and third. Christian Eckes gains five spots in terms of the championship battle uh, on Michael Self. Yeah, those five points are big. He's got to get about 20 more now to get in contention. Those guys are frustrated. They know how good their car is and they saw a really dominating run by their teammate Chandler Smith here who was clicking since the start of practice through victory lane today. There is Billy to the left of Chandler Smith, uh, his wife Emily right there, and uh, the entire Venturini clan down there in victory lane celebrating again this year. Ninth win in 14 races for this Venturini team. They won all but one pole position throughout the season. What a dominating run by their entire effort sweeping the podium here in the finish order. The Arkham Menard Series always loves coming here to Iowa Speedway in the middle of cornfield. It's like a field of dreams. And we saw a very interesting race here tonight at Iowa Speedway. So for Dave Reed, Jim Trado, and everybody at Lucas Oil Production Studios who did such a great job, I'm Bob Dillner saying thank you for watching from Iowa Speedway and congratulations to Chandler Smith.